Every sequence break has its story and the ways that it has impacted speedrunning. If you take a look at Banjo 2E for example, solving a puzzle as zero health Banjo has had no effect on the speedrun since its discovery in 2013, whereas flip clips have had massive implications on real time runs, tool assisted speedruns and challenges. Today we look at a sequence break in Donkey Kong 64 that I believe has been the most impactful on the speedrun. Without this sequence break, any percent would be a little over 2 hours, a whole hour and 36 minutes longer than its current form. Today, we tell the story of Hideout Halmerli. To look at how this all started, we need to go back to the infancy of Donkey Kong 64 speedrunning, all the way back to 2006 when the first recorded real-time speedrun of Donkey Kong 64 was posted to a website called Speed Demos Archive, performed by the runner known as Tom Vodiver. At this point, only some of the sequence breaks were known, including being able to enter six of the eight worlds early with Lanky Kong using his ground attack. However, Tom still collected all 8 keys and 100 of the 201 gold bananas in the game. Why did he do this? In order to beat the game, the game requires you to collect both keys 3 and 8. Under normal circumstances, reaching key 3 is no problem as it only requires collecting the first 2 keys and 15 gold bananas. Key 8 on the other hand, requires the player to collect the first 7 keys excluding key 3. 100 gold bananas are also required to clear the bee locker guarding the entrance to Helm. Unlike every other lobby in the game, the entrance to Helm isn't a standard DK portal, but instead a loading zone trigger inside the tunnel behind bee locker. The game also places a soft requirement on the player having Tiny's third solo cranky move, that being monkey port. This is needed in order to get to the top of K. Rule's ship. These requirements were a massive hurdle, and most of Tom's run is spent collecting items to fulfil these requirements, resulting in his run clocking in with an in-game time of 4 hours and 26 minutes. Modern glitchless speedruns on the Nintendo 64 take a little under 4 hours, but the general point is still there, 4 hours is still a long time. This intended path of beating the game persisted until around about mid-June 2009. Until this point, you still needed Monkey Port, 100 Gold Bananas, and 6 of the 8 keys in order to access Heidel Helm. However, on June the 9th, 2009, a glitch hunter called Mano Cheese discovered a way to enter Hideout Helm without obtaining 100 Gold Bananas, kickstarting the craziest 4 days in Donkey Kong 64 glitch discovery. To perform the initial method discovered by Mano Cheese, you will first need to damage yourself with an orange. This gives you 99 frames, or around about 3.3 seconds of invulnerability which will protect you against instant death on the lava plane. After getting this temporary invulnerability, you have to come to a standstill, usually with first person within around about 0.01 units of the ledge. For reference, Tiny runs at a speed of 3.5 units per frame. You have to stop within a space with a width of around about 0.2% of Tiny's running speed. By coming to a standstill within this gap, you fall through the ledge. This is because DK64 collision geometry isn't perfectly lined up. There are gaps between where the floor ends and the wall starts. So by falling through this gap, you can clip through. This is known as a ledge clip. With Hideout Helm early now possible, you can skip the majority of the 100 gone bananas that you previously needed, bringing down the total to 15 as there was no known method to enter Frantic Factory early at the time. You still needed 6 of the 8 keys and monkey port, but it still saved a huge amount of time, eventually cutting off 1 hour and 37 minutes from the run. You might think that cutting out the majority of what is required to enter Helm would have shortened the run by a little more than 1 hour 37 minutes, and you'd be right. In theory, the run could have been cut even further. However, just 3 days after Hideout Helm Early was discovered, Unreal, Pemit, and Manachis came up with the second part of the Hideout Helm Early puzzle, Hideout Helm Lobby Early. By using the pillar near Monkey Port, he can get to the top of the snout of the ship as Tiny using Ponytail Twirl. 
After reaching the snout, you can clip through the corner of the left eye to enter the loading zone into Hideout Helm Lobby. This skips needing keys 6 and 7 to enter the lobby, and eventually would cut out both keys 4 and 5, as you no longer needed to enter Castle, and caves could be entered without key 5 in order to purchase Monkey Paw. The first run with Helm Lobby early was completed later that day by Manor Cheese, clocking in with a time of 2 hours and 8 minutes. Despite this large time cut, there was still one big problem. Hideout Helm early with the ledge clip was not an easy trick to do at all. Runners at the time would have to wait 9 months for an easier method to be found. On the 7th of March 2010, Xcore discovered a rather simple way to get out of bounds as Diddy or Tiny. By backflipping into this corner, the Kong is pushed out by the support and into out of bounds territory, and therefore allowing the Kong to enter the level. This meant the ledge clip was no more. For now. This improved consistency a ton, and thanks to that, and the discovery of Funky Weapons Glitch and Blastomatic Skip, the time was lowered even further from a 1 hour 15 minute time to a 42 minute time. The next few years of discoveries regarding Helm Early can be defined by their extreme creativity in search for the new goal. After all, we have now entered the lobby without any keys and we can enter the level without 100 gone bananas. All that was left was Tiny and the Monkey Port ability. If Monkey Port could be skipped, then we could not only cut out some move buying, but caves would not need to be visited at all. Some of these ideas were insane, such as using Diddy's rocket barrel that spawns near Fungo Lobby to get to the top of K. Rool's ship, or by using a boulder from the main island and then bringing it over into the Blastomatic and performing a ceiling kick on that boulder to get up to the lobby. Remember that one because it's going to be useful in a second. The only discovery which saved any time was Pillarless, where Xcord proved that it was possible to skip backflipping onto the pillar to perform the traditional Tiny Helm early method. This only saved time in the order of a few seconds and doesn't seem to have ever been used in a world record speedrun. After the discovery of the DK Chunky method where you brought a boulder into the Blastomatic, there was a lot of hope for Monkey Port being skipped. If we could skip needing to bring a boulder into the Blastomatic and perform the Mooncake without it, then we would have a fast way to get into Helm Lobby that only required DK. With the assistance of emulation tools, on the 4th of May 2013, Ringrush created a tool assisted demonstration that proved this was possible. By abusing lag, DK can clip out of the Blastomatic with a regular kick. He then performs a jump that brings him to a point where he can Mooncake and the rest plays out like the regular DK Chunky method. Great. Problem solved, right? No, unfortunately not. This method, to put it bluntly, was not easy at all. Not only was it insanely difficult, but its time save was only a minute or two. No one would touch it until 2014 when a time save became that little more than just a minute or two. In 2014, with the help of another trick called Main Menu Mode, any percent was completely overhauled to use only DK up to the final boss. This meant that you needed to get to Helm as only DK, which meant that the Moon Kick inside the Blastomatic, later known as Blastomatic Kick, was mandatory for this new route. How much did this route save? Around about 12 minutes in an already 42 minute speedrun. Over the course of the next month, the trick became more doable, as a new method was found that just required performing an edge kick. The trick was still really hard and has only ever been performed for task tools up until the point of the 14th of March 2014 when it was performed by a human in real time on console for the first time by Ring Rush. The next time Ring Rush would get this trick was in the first record set with Blastomatic Kick which was a 34-23. Despite this trick being executed in real time, it's still one of the hardest tricks ever performed in real time. To stress how tough this was, it became the thing to grind out to get it once. Seafox, a notable speedrunner and former any% world record holder, took around 50 hours of practice just to get it once. <gasps> yes! 
those who ended up getting the trick were put onto a Hall of Famer-esque list. Even today, the trick has only ever been performed by 17 people, most of these being those who wanted to get that 12 minute time save for their runs. You don't get this for any old trick, there's no Google Doc with everyone who has ever performed a backwards long jump in Super Mario 64. This trick was clearly very hard. Anyway, so you're in the lobby as DK. How do you get into Hideout Helm as only DK? The backflip wouldn't work, so what could be used? Well, you had two methods on hand. You could use the damage boost ledge clip mentioned earlier in the video, or you could lat clip your way through a wall to get out of bounds. Both methods being incredibly inconsistent. Thankfully for the sanity of many runners, a Japanese runner by the name of Signa found a way to skip both the orange clip and the ledge clip in late July 2014. By performing a moon kick near the Gorilla Gun Pad in Helm Lobby, it's possible to clip through the pipe support near where Chunky's bonus minigame spawns. Some other setups were found by the likes of Hipster that clipped out on different supports in the lobby, but in the end, all of these resulted in a way to get out of bounds in the lobby that was relatively easy and didn't rely on oranges. It's worth reminding that Blastomatic Kick is a very hard trick. People did start to get consistent at it, but not many people were able to get in. After some rerouting to put Helm under a 4 minute timer, the last record with Blastomatic Kick was performed by Isotage on the 19th of March 2015 with a 28 minute 32 second time. What followed next helped to make the any percent run a whole lot easier. In mid 2014, Xcord was messing around a lot with a glitch called Tag Barrel Storage, investigating what could be done with it. He came across some pretty funny results, such as being able to rocket barrel as other Kongs. This led to a lot of interest over what else tag barrel storage could do. In April 2015, Adam Whitmore, Outlaw Mental Man, Ring Rush, and Xcord found a glitch called Telegrabbing, which allows you to warp up the difference between your current elevation and your stored elevation as long as a floor is above you. With the assistance of two telegrabs, you can warp all the way up to Hideout Helm Lobby without needing a Blastomatic Kick. This new method was significantly easier and faster than Blastomatic Kick, and it only took until the 1st of July 2015 when Signa performed the new record with Telegrab Helm early. Later methods of telegrabbing up to Helm were discovered, including getting up to Helm with three telegrabs, which saved around about 10 seconds, and a method which avoided the 50% chance of failure with the second telegrab on the initial method at the cost of 17 seconds. And this is where the story is today. Telegram Helm early and a moon kick, and we can enter Hideout Helm without 100 gold bananas, without any keys prior to key 8, and without any Kongs unlocked. There's a lot of interesting tricks and sequence breaks in Donkey Kong 64, but none are as rich in story as Helm early. You may think that the story of Helm early is over, as I have told the entire thing, but that's a good thing with stories. There's always just one more chapter. <laughs>